Okay, so let's take a look at how to create a vintage photograph in Toon Boom Studio 7. So the first thing we need to do is import a photograph. And we do this by going to the top menu and selecting File, Import File. And I'm going to go to my desktop where I've saved an image of two scooters. So you can see it right here. And it's asking if I like to fit the image to the camera width, so I'll say OK. You can always resize it later, so that's not a big deal. And so we see it like this. Um, and you might notice that I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Z to zoom out, that my project file already looks kind of square, but it's still slightly rectangular. So let's take a look at our project settings and make sure that our project dimensions are actually square. So we would do that by going to File, Animation Properties. And so we see here it's 640 by 570, so let's maybe make it um, 640 by 640 and say OK. And there we go, so we have an actual square now. Um, and you can always move your image if you want to show more or less of the top or the bottom, like I might select this and pull it down a little bit so we can see that mirror like that. And I chose a photograph with some uh, vibrant colors. So we have a blue, orange, red, yellow, green. So we can see that this is a full colored recent photograph. It's not a vintage looking at all in any way. There are no sepia tones, but we'd like to change that. So we're going to do that by going to um, the timeline here and clicking on this plus button, this green plus button, and it's going to ask us what kind of layer we'd like to create, what kind of new element. And from this type drop down list, I'm going to select the color transformation effect. I'm actually going to rename it color transform just so I remember what it is and say OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my image in the timeline and drag and drop it over the color transformation effect. So now the color transformation effect will be able to influence my image. I'm going to zoom in again using uh, the keyboard shortcut X. And then I'm going to go to the properties panel here um, and select the color transform effect in the properties panel so that I can see the properties of that color transform effect. And I actually just realized here that it already says color transform effect, so I probably didn't have to rename it like that. I could have left it as vintage, vintage photo color transform. Maybe that looks better. Color transform vintage photo. Anyway, so let's select it one more time, our color transform effect. I'm going to just increase the size of this window both ways and if you scroll down you can see there's a little bit more uh, to the properties panel the color transform effect and there are two ways that you can change the color you can do a multiplicative transformation or an additive so with the colors that are already here you can make them uh, more red but it's subtly red it's not a crazy amount of red and that's what you would find in additive because this will make your photograph really 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 red so that's sort of the difference um, in a very quick layman's terms so what I'm going to do, I think, is actually work more with multiplicative because I find it a little bit more subtle. I definitely want to add a lot of red, and I want to add the opposite of blue, which is yellow. So I have to go in the negative direction that's going in the positive direction. So we want to give it kind of a, an orangey-yellow feel. I don't think the green would do much. Make it slightly more sepia. something like that. So you can play around until you get uh, the tones and the colors that you like. So it's starting to look a little bit more vintage, but let's add a little bit more um, to continue that vintage photograph look. So what I'm going to do next is add a black border. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create another drawing layer. And I'm going to name this black border or black frame maybe and we can see the type is a drawing layer and I'll say OK. And then on this layer I'm going to use the polyline tool which you can find under the brush tool here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a point and drag it and then draw another point and drag it and this is to get a round corner uh, 
at the square frame corner. Then I'm going to click in a relatively straight line and drag so that I'll still get that round corner. Same thing here. Click and drag. Click and drag. Click and drag. Same thing. And you, as you're dragging out the handle, the bezier handle, you can control the shape of those curves at the corner. And then I'm going to hover my pen cursor over the first point, and you'll see a round circle, which means it's going to complete the shape, and click on it there. So now we just have a frame line, but we can't actually fill the space between this rounded frame line and the outer black square, because that just indicates the frame of your project, but it's not a physical line in your project. So to solve this problem we're going to select the rectangle tool and then just quickly draw a square on the same layer. Now if we use the paint tool we can fill in the zone between those two lines. Then what I'm going to do is hide the grid because I'm finding it a little distracting. So already we see this is kind of looking more vintagey. The next thing I'd like to do is add a circular gradient. So from maybe black to almost transparent, touching the frame and radiating inwards towards the image. So what I'm going to do is go to the color palette, create a new color, double click on that color, and I'm going to select gradient. I could also select the select tool so we don't see the paint bucket cursor. Um, the first little key here indicates the center of the circle where the one on the right side indicates uh, the color and the opacity in the outer part of your gradient. So I'm going to choose radial gradient and I'm going to take down the opacity to zero for the center um, and leave it at 100% for the uh, outer part of the circle or the outer part of the gradient and I'm going to keep it at black but you can always change the color as well by uh, clicking in here and things like that and then sliding this up you'll get all those colors. And then I'm going to close my window. So now if I use the paint tool and I paint in this zone, we're still in the black frame layer you'll see that you get that dark circular frame. And if you find it too dark, what you can do is use the edit texture, it should say edit texture and gradient, because it does both, um, for this circle. So if you click in this area again, you'll see how the gradient is being distributed. So what I'm going to do is click in the space and then just back out a little bit so I can see the entire editing mechanism. And use the space bar just to push that up a little bit. And I'm going to hold down shift so I can shrink my circle. So you could make something really extreme like that, you could pull it out and make it very subtle. Uh, what I like to do is have the circle touch the edges, so touch the corner of the frame like that. I think it looks best personally for me uh, when the editing circle touches the edges or the corners of uh, my frame. So let's zoom in again. So I think that looks pretty good. So now let's uh, export a snapshot of our, uh, of our image here. We can do that by going to the top and selecting File, Export Snapshot. And I'm going to select a place on my desktop to output this file and I'm going to call it Vintage Photo and click on the Save button. And then if we minimize this window here, we can see here on the desktop, here's the original image. Actually, I can double click so you can remember how colorful it was. And then let's double click to see the vintage version.